Yeah. yeah. I think I think there's you know there's a there's a skills media literacy aspect to it and there's a tools kind of platform technology aspect to it. So one of the apps we worked on is called Proof Mode for example. What it does is it digitally creates a hash that proves that that image was not tampered with and you can go back and so we use that in the context of pre preparing activists to collect footage that may be useful in legal settings um, to counter kind of um, attempts to discredit or disqualify the footage as evidence which often happens especially with the unequal, unequal structures of power that we're always facing, whatever the abuses are. Um, so that's one example. But I think if you go back to um, a little bit of the ethical and the security checklists that we encourage folks to go through, one of them is thinking about the intent of the filmer. And what we've seen in a lot of different places is how old videos are often recycled and rehashed um, to incite hate uh, to sway narratives. Um, we're seeing this happen right now in Brazil, where I'm from, um, where you have lots of old videos being resurfaced to influence the, the presidential election, and it's working. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, so I think there's a component in which we want to work with communities that are, again, risking their lives to create this footage to make sure that they can do the most they can to make their fo footage as um, bulletproof, if you will, in terms of here's the hash, here's the location reference, here's the G GPS tagging, here's the metadata. So lots of different skills that you can use um, to increase the chance of your footage not being questioned. Um, and then we're also working with several other partners on pr kind of pressuring the technology companies to think about solutions that can be put into place for scale into their platforms. Um, so things like some of the things Erica was talking about.